Ladies and gentlemen, today is going to be the most exciting and possibly informative video you've seen ever because today we're going to be talking about motherboard BIOS updates. I know it is ridiculously exciting, but it is a very serious topic and it is something that we should talk about because you might be a little bit like me where you've had a gaming PC and it's come up at the like bottom right hand corner for literally the last like three years saying update your BIOS and you've been choosing to ignore it. But is that sensible? Because I want to get into the weeds on this and talk Talk about what a motherboard bias actually is, talk about what the updates are, the advantages and disadvantages that they can actually have for your gaming PC, and of course actually walk you through the process on how to update your motherboard bias and hopefully show you how simple it is. We'll also talk about the very serious risks. So join us as we go through absolutely everything you need to know, right after a short word from this video's sponsor. Deepcool's Mystique All-in-One is here and it brings stunning looks, functionality and performance. This epic new cooler packs a 2.8 inch IPS display, allowing you to see your CPU temperatures, speeds and pump information, or if you're a bit more flamboyant, playback images and GIFs to really make your PC stand out. The Mystique is perfect for both high wattage Intel and AMD CPUs with up to 360mm radiator sizes, performance static pressure fans and Deepcool's awesome 5th generation water pump. Learn more today with the link down below. Now to properly understand what updating a BIOS is actually going to do, we first need to C our BIOS and it stands for Basic Input Output System. These have been around for literally ages and if you like the, the kind of the gap between the hardware itself and Windows they kind of like bridge everything together if you like and it's very easy to access you just mash the delete key usually and you'll be greeted with a screen like this. So the BIOS version I've got here isn't even on their website. This is really old this is why I'm updating uh, this particular rig but you usually have a screen that tells you everything that's going on in your rig so you can check that everything's been detected so things like your RAM uh, your CPU, here we've got a Ryzen uh, processor, you have overclocking tabs, you've got advanced sections where you can tweak loads of different things, like when we do our tests with things like core counts and things, you can find that video in the top right corner of your screen if you want to see how core counts actually affect gaming. These are the sort of things you can do in the BIOS, you can turn things on, turn things off, adjust values, overclock, uh, but to what most people actually need is generally speaking just a aim the expo or X Intel XMP, so overclocking your RAM, uh, adjusting your fan profile so the motherboard will essentially read the temperature of your CPU and then send power to the fans and you can adjust how much power go to the fans at different values. Really great way of making your system quieter. And then you can also do things like change the SSD or the drive that's actually being booted from, which is going to be very useful if you want to have multiple drives with different OS's on. But I think a lot of people are kind of a little bit scared and intimidated uh, by the BIOS. We don't need to be because unless you're actively making changes, nothing is going to happen. And even if you are making changes, uh, it does come up, well, most boards should do anyway, uh, it comes up when you change a value, save and exit, it shows you everything that you've done. So you can double check values and things. But it's only really if you're going to be like overclocking. Uh, that you need to be really wary. Everything else is pretty robust and there are like safeguards and things in place. So you should be absolutely fine. But a BIOS actually goes beyond just everything that you see. And when you do a BIOS update, it updates the motherboard as a whole. So this is gonna give you better stability and in theory, better performance, but of course it depends how old the motherboard is. And I will say as well, you do also get extra features as time goes on. So for example, my parents' PC, I built for them. I don't really think they play many games, uh, but they actually added resizable bar support on their motherboard like a couple of years after it was released. So I went back, I updated it for them. And then now the gaming performance they get is better. But when you don't really play any games, that doesn't really matter. But you get the point, extra features if you update your motherboard BIOS but one of the best things actually that you can do if you've got a really fast memory kit and you find that you're having problems when you're actually uh, trying to enable your XMP or Expo profile and overclock your RAM if you're finding that the PC is like boot looping and you can't actually get in just doing a BIOS update actually will usually fix your problem because they add more support for more memory kits. So the ones that sort of were released after the motherboard BIOS that you have was released should then in theory be supported. It's not like a definitely going to work but it usually works uh, in my account. So BIOS updates are typically you're going to do them for two reasons, right? One is because there is a potential problem with your system, like the memory, like the CPU, anything really that you specifically need to be patched or the resizable bar support that my parents' PC had. If there's something like that, then yes, I would definitely advise that you update your motherboard BIOS. But of course, there is the risk 
when you update your motherboard BIOS, which is that if a power goes out or you're stupid like me and you pull out your power cord or something like that, you laugh, but I mean, it's right by my foot. I've not done it during a BIOS update, but I have done it before. If you're doing a BIOS update and the power goes out, it can actually render your whole motherboard useless, at least until you send it off and get it reflashed, which at the very best is a right pain in the bum. So I understand why a lot of people don't want to update their motherboard BIOS unless they actively need to. And the honest truth is that it's entirely up to you. There's not necessarily a right or wrong answer. I would definitely say that if you're a very early adopter, so like if you did buy one of those Ryzen boards when they first came out, it's probably more beneficial for you to update your motherboard BIOS than if you've bought one in the last couple of months or so, because there's not really gonna be like a massive difference probably between the BIOS you've got and the one now. With of course one big exception, which is the main reason I think a lot of people will update their motherboard BIOS is actually for better CPU support. More importantly, if you buy like a, I don't know, Ryzen 7000 chip now, and then let's say in a few months time they come out with Ryzen 9000 or 8000, or well it would be Ryzen 9000, then the motherboard BIOS you have will not work uh, with the new chips because you don't have a BIOS that supports them. They didn't know what they are. And this is when you will need to update your motherboard BIOS. And there's a few different ways to do this. So let's talk you through everything. And the first way is my preferred method, which actually is the old fashioned way, which is to grab a USB flash drive and actually find your motherboard online and download the file onto this and then do it manually because this gives you the largest amount of control possible. You get a full list of all of the different BIOSes. You can maybe Google it to see if there are any issues or anything. But more importantly, you get that full update log so you can actually decide whether it's worth doing it in the first place and you know exactly what you're getting is the most up to date. But this is the motherboard I have is the NZXT B650E N7. If you don't know the name of your BIOS try and find out by looking at like receipts or something like that. Then somewhere if you scroll down it will usually say like support or downloads or something like that and this is where you'll find all of the BIOS files. So here we are look. Uh, we have our download section and as you can see there's actually been quite a lot of BIOS updates here and as I say I'm running like the original version which is like 1.1 which isn't even on the website so you can see there's definitely quite a lot that's changed and I should get more stability and more performance if I actually update this. So we're going to download this, extract it into its own folder so it's ready to go and then you usually find that there are two or three files here so we've got two here. Uh, one is our update log or patch notes or release notes, whatever you want to call them. Uh, it tells us exactly what's changed. So here the Agisa has been updated to the latest version. Uh, then we also have some instructions that tells you what to do. The most important one really is it tells you that your flash drive should be formatted in FAT32 so that the motherboard can actually read this. If you don't know how to like change it yourself, very straightforward, essentially just right click on the drive. Obviously make sure there's nothing on this or at least nothing on it that you want to keep. And then you can right click, format, change it to FAT32. 32 and then it's ready to go but if you're using like a really large modern SSD uh, stick or something like that you'll find it might not actually support FAT32 so find one of those old ones that you have lying around the house and those really should be formatable in FAT32. Uh, but that's the first file. The second is the BIOS itself. This one is called n7something.rom. That's the one we're going to use. But there's two methods actually of updating the BIOS with the USB flash drive. The first one is applicable if you have a working PC like we do now. Really straightforward. You literally just drag this onto the stick, load it up as we do in just a second, and then just let it do its thing. And you've got like an on-screen display that will sort of walk you through the process. You can see that it's actually doing something. Happy days. But the other version, and this isn't supported on every motherboard so I will demonstrate this the N7 does as well, but I want to get this out of the box to show you. You're after something that's called USB flashing or USB BIOS flashback or something like that. And this is a really useful feature if you're buying a motherboard. I highly recommend you get one that actually has this because essentially this is future proofing your board to allow it to update the motherboard BIOS without the need to have everything else working. So you don't even need to have a CPU or RAM in. It literally just uses the chips that are on the board itself to do the flashing for you. So if you don't have a CPU that's compatible, that's the point, you don't need one. And then obviously your CPU then becomes compatible uh, once you've actually updated everything. So if we look on the side of this motherboard here, you see there's this little button here that says BIOS flashback. And then somewhere just above it, there is actually a squared out USB port with this little gray box that says BIOS in it. So what you would need to do is make sure that you've got that file, make sure your motherboard supports this feature, of course, and then you drag it on here and you usually have to rename the file. Like ASUS actually gives you a little like third file that will rename it for you. Uh, but the name will vary, like on Gigabyte, for example, you rename it to gigabyte.bin, make sure it's the only thing on the FAT32 drive. You'd whack this in that USB BIOS port like that, uh, but make sure there's power running to the board. 
and then you literally just hold down this button, a light comes on for approximately like, up to five minutes, it'll flash like a certain color, and then once it goes out, your motherboard is updated. But obviously you don't want to do that unless you have to, because I'd rather have like an on-screen display that actually walks you through the process. Let's actually proceed to do this now by dragging this across to our USB flash drive, restarting our PC, mashing of course that delete key to get into the BIOS. We're then looking for a tool that sounds something like flash or update or something like that. On this particular board, it's under tool, instant flash. It's gonna give us a little warning to say that if we have like BitLocker enabled or anything like that, then if you update the BIOS, it can like break everything. I don't think that's really applicable to most people, but obviously read the warning and ensure that doesn't actually apply to you. Then we can select continue and it will say no image file detected because this is not FAT32. Maybe I'm just testing you. Maybe this was deliberate to show you how to fix this problem. You wanna to go to start and find disk management and then scroll down to actually find your USB flash drive. So here you can see it is actually in XFAT, and then I have this Windows 11 partition that is actually formatted as FAT32. So in theory, I should just be able to put it on there actually. So here's our USB flash drive. Here's our ROM. I will copy this across to our Windows install section, and then we'll restart. Remash our potatoes, go back into tool, instant flash, Yes, and there you go, it's found it. So I'm gonna stick with that, that was good. That was 100% deliberate to show you what happens if it's not FAT32 and how to get around it. Then it really is just a case of hitting update and obviously it does give you a warning. And this is the point where exactly like it says, do not power off, do not pull this out, do not do anything, just literally wait until your PC has fully restarted. And you'll find that actually on certain motherboards when it's done, the PC will shut itself down but because the PC at this stage will restart itself a few times anyway, I would say give it like at least 15 minutes from when it's off before you then like push the power button and try and turn it on, just in case, because you really don't wanna mess around with this. I, I do like that you have this visual display, so in theory you know when it's done, but just give it 15 minutes after it's done just to be 100% sure. But it really is just a case of waiting for it to finish now. Make yourself a cup of tea. Hang on a minute, is that? It is. That was quick, that was only about three minutes or so. Some motherboards, especially like high-end uh, like X670 boards or something like that, take ages. The more that's on a motherboard, usually the longer it takes to update. Asus boards in particular tend to be a little bit slower, but that was very quick. So there you go. I like to think that has proved to you that it is actually very straightforward and very easy uh, to update your motherboard BIOS. And hopefully you know, now know the reasons why you'd want to do it. It's all about getting better stability, potentially better performance, better longevity on some of your parts, and also extra features and support for extra CPUs. So if none of those interest you, then don't worry about it. If you have any questions, let us know down in the comment section below. Let us know as well whether you actually update your motherboard BIOS or whether you're like me and you left your BIOS like go for years and then you upgraded and you went, oh, actually that's a lot quicker to boot. That's quite a lot better. I should have done that ages ago. Smash the like button if you've enjoyed this. Get yourself subscribed. And of course, if you do want to learn anything about this gaming PC here, including current pricing, on anything featured, then you can find that listed down below with our affiliate links. And while you're down there, why not give your PC a makeover with Deepcool's new Mystique All-in-One? This incredible cooler is ideal for both Intel and AMD CPUs and pairs stunning looks with powerhouse performance. Deepcool's new pump can run under 21 dB for near silent operation and paired with their newly redesigned copper coal plate, heat transfer is even more efficient. So get your GIFs and your GIFs ready. There's a screen coming to a cooler near you. Learn more today with the link down below. But thank you so much for watching this video. We'll catch you in the next one.